Welcome to another edition of Bogosity. In episode three, we soundly trounced the stupid moon landing hoax. But there were a couple of problems. One thing people said was that we were just picking on Bart C. Brell, and surely they couldn't all be like that, could they? The second is, why be so harsh on a guy who's just doing what he thinks is right? Well, in this episode, we'll look at a different moon hoax video, and we'll show you that A, yes, they're all like that, B, they know perfectly well that they're lying, and C, the moon landing hoax is still the dumbest bogosity ever. Bogosity. If you've seen all the other episodes, you've seen that people will do anything to cling on to their bogosity. They'll even lie and excuse lies in others. This is apparent in David Percy's idiotic video, What Happened on the Moon? You'll see the same stupid claims and several parts that prove that Percy is nothing but a liar trying to scam people out of some money for his bogus books and videos. A representative of mankind may well have gone to the moon in 1969, but our research suggests that images of the Apollo landings are not a true and accurate record of such an event. In our view, the Apollo pictures were faked. Many were also encoded with deliberate mistakes. In the years following the Apollo missions, it became increasingly clear to us that there were also errors in the continuity between the live TV coverage and the still photographs. Many of the images are replete with inconsistencies and anomalies. Yep, it's the same old photo anomaly bogosity all over again. Let's watch the stupid. Remember this clip? I used this clip in episode 3 to show that the videos could not have been taken in slow motion. We've dubbed this the jump salute. When the astronaut reaches the peak of his jump, his colleague takes a snap with the Hasselblad stills camera. Let's ignore the reasons as to why such a small jump in the much reduced one-sixth gravity of the moon. No, let's not. Small jump? Look how high up he is. Basketball players can't jump much higher than that, and that's without 70 kilogram packs on their backs. This is the resulting Hasselblad photograph of that event. The most significant difference between these two images of the same action is that in the still photo, there's a triangle of fabric that should be absolutely secure and motionless that has flapped up from the top of the pliss, the personal life support system, as the astronaut jumps into the air. In the TV freeze frame, we can see this triangular flap is correctly fastened and is therefore not visible. Only because you've cherry-picked a frame where it can't be seen. Let's look at it again. See, there it is, right where it should be. Don't tell me he didn't see that while looking frame by frame for the specific one he showed in his video. That's lie number one. Well, what I'm about to show you is a sequence with a large color transparency of the Earth clipped up against the window. If I put right behind it, you can, you can see that more clearly. And when it's clipped up against the window, it becomes illuminated by the light of the sun behind it. If that looks familiar too, that's because we showed this full sequence at the end of episode 3. Bart C. Brell claimed it was a round window acting as a cutout for the much larger Earth. Remember? Then you'll remember how the Earth moved off the edge of the rectangular window. That debunks Siebel's claim, and it debunks Percy's. How does the transparency manage to move off the edge of the window like that? Percy has his lie all ready. During the sequence, after the camera has zoomed in, surprisingly, something comes between the camera and the Earth. Oh, you mean like the edge of the window? Obviously, this could not happen if they were shooting directly out of the window. It would not then be possible for anything to get midway between the camera and the Earth. Yes, it would if you were filming the Earth out of a window and the edge of the window obscured it, which is exactly what happened. And again, he had to have seen the whole video to select out the segments he used. He used segments both before and after this one, which clearly shows the Earth being filmed from out a rectangular window. Lie number two. Any photograph reporting to be taken on the moon by the named Apollo astronauts using these lunar surface cameras must feature the large reticle at the center of the picture. Not only that, it would be totally impossible for an object to get in front of the reticle on the developed image. Yes, the same claim we debunked before. There's a lot of that. But wait, this isn't just repeating the same thing. He makes a lot of stupid claims about the reticles. So what is NASA's opinion on the reason for the reticles? 
those are there in those photographs in order to provide the engineers with the ability to measure distances. Uh, they would they would knowing the the uh, the way the photo was put together, they would be able to use that to measure things off in the distance, and so that's why they're there. Did the reticles also help to judge distances? Not actually. Because that's what NASA says the reticles are for. Well, to do that, you need um, a stereo pair. However, the Apollo pictures, those with the reticles, were not taken as stereo pairs. Oh, really? Then how do you explain this one? Yes, this is a genuine stereo image. How about this one? Just replay this sequence with a pair of red-blue 3D glasses. How about this one? I think we can call this lie number three. Besides, they're completely ignoring the concept of photogrammetry, a technique as old as photography itself. It uses both optics and projective geometry to measure and interpret photographic images, and these reticles provide excellent references for this technique. In these Earth pictures of typical tree shadows, notice the parallel lines of shadow on the ground. Oh no, not this again! But hey, look, what's this? Another shadow that's not parallel to the others? And how about this little tree back here? Its shadow isn't going in the same direction. Not only were they not being very observant with their own pictures, but they had to have cherry-picked the two best pictures they could find to try to convince you they're parallel. The shadows cast by the rocks in the foreground should have been east-west, like the Lem shadow here. When natural sunlight is illuminating objects on flat terrain, this result is impossible. But it's not on flat terrain. Remember, we used this exact same photo in episode 3 to show you how the shadow changed as the terrain changed. And yet, Percy deliberately cropped that part off when he showed it on his video and then he pretended it was flat terrain when he knew that it wasn't. For those of you keeping score at home, that's lie number four. If the Apollo 11 TV footage was taken using a night lens, then what about the still photographs? We have to ask how they produce such good results because the stills camera was not specifically designed for low light conditions and the camera was not fitted with a special night lens. Percy is a video director. He knows perfectly well that shooting video on a CCD doesn't pick up light as well as a 75mm still camera with a 60mm lens, especially with the film they were using. Heck, anyone who's ever taken a snapshot of something while someone else was videotaping it knows that. Lie number five. I think you get the idea. This video is just one lie after another after another. And obviously, there's a lot of crossover between his claims and Siebel's. So let's now focus on the different claims that Percy makes so you can get the idea that, even though there are differences that the Moon Hoax people point out, at their core, they're just the same. As I watched this person walking, a Coke bottle in the lower right quadrant of the screen it, is, it seems to be kicked over and rolled across. How sad. Here's this woman, and we don't know if she's delusional or wants attention or really believes this, but in any event, it's sad to see her exploited by these liars. Let's take a look at these Coke bottles. This is a lens flare. That happens when the light from a bright object reflects off the optics in the camera lens. Look at how it moves exactly opposite to the way the astronaut moves. And the same thing in the other clip. With Percy and with all of the cameramen and photographers and experts he was talking to, he had to have known about lens flares and how they behave. Especially obvious ones like this. That makes this line number, oh, you know what, I'm sick of counting them.